Okay, so a few days ago, Steve Kirsch posed the following problem. He's got a data set of 7,500 people, of whom 5,625 were vaccinated and 1,875 were unvaccinated. And observed over a period of six months, which we can assume is 182 days, 15 of those people died, but they were all from the vaccinated group. And of the 15 who died, four died within 24 hours of getting the vaccine. Steve asked, what's the probability of this happening if the vaccine was safe? Clearly assumed this was going to be a very low probability, but what is that probability? And how could we calculate it with the observed data here? Well, here's how I answered that question. And note that the solution I'm proposing here assumes that the data are accurate that Steve's got here. It ignores all confounders like age, and it assumes that the vaxxed and unvaxxed are similar types of people. So it's a gross simplification. What we're going to do is use Bayes to learn from the two types of evidence. So the two types of evidence, again, are the evidence about the fact that 15 of the vaccinated died, but none of the unvaccinated died from the number of vaccinated and unvaccinated that were given. So that's sort of that first piece of evidence. Then we've got the second piece of evidence that four of the deaths were within 24 hours of the people being vaccinated. What we're going to do is test this hypothesis H, which is that the vaccinated mortality rate is no greater than the unvaccinated mortality rate. So that's the vaccine is safe hypothesis. What we're going to do is learn from that evidence the probability that that hypothesis is true. And we're going to use Bayes, therefore, to calculate the probability of H, which is written P of H, after observing the two types of evidence. All the calculations based on the assumptions that I'm going to show you can be done manually, but I'm going to do them using our Bayesian network software. So first of all, we want to take account of this first piece of evidence, which is the observed number of deaths among the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. And I want to show you what our so-called prior assumptions are. This is a standard Bayesian network approach to hypothesis testing, because what we're actually going to learn is the mortality rate of the vaccinated and the unvaccinated from the observation of a number of vaccinated people and a number of deaths amongst those, and similarly for the unvaccinated. And what we're assuming, that the mortality rate, which is a probability between 0 and 1, like the probability that one of these people will die in that period, it could be anything between 0 and 1, it's equally likely to be anything to be between 0 and 1. That's so-called uniform distribution, the same as assumed for the unvaccinated. And the number of deaths, therefore, that we're going to observe amongst the vaccinated is just a binomial distribution, where n is the number vaccinated, and the, the p, the probability, is the vaccinated mortality rate. And the same applies here. So at the moment, all we've entered into the model are the total number vaccinated and the total number unvaccinated. And in its prior state, of course, so far we've learned nothing. These are just uniform distributions. And the hypothesis that the vaccine is safe, which is the, the hypothesis that the vaccinated mortality rate, P1, is no greater than the unvaccinated rate, P2, in its starting state, these are essentially just 50-50. They're not exactly 50-50 because this is going to be greater than or equal to. We're more or less assuming these are equally likely. But the key thing is that the prior probabilities of the P1 and P2 are equal. So what we're going to now do is see how that first crucial piece of evidence, which is the number of deaths amongst the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, enables us to learn the updated probabilities here, and hence the updated so-called posterior probability of the main hypothesis that we're interested in. So what have we got here? We know amongst the vaccinated, there were 15 deaths, and amongst the unvaccinated, there were zero deaths. And we're now simply going to run the model to get the updated results. And what you can see is both of these distributions have changed because they've learned from this data. So this is a distribution with a mean of 0.0028. And you can see there the 95% confidence interval is between 0.0016 and 0.004, etc. Whereas for the unvaccinated, 
it's a much lower probability. And again, you can see the different confidence intervals here. And of course, this node here, which just to check how that's defined, it's simply saying, well, if P1 is less than or equal to P2, then this is true, otherwise it's false. And so it's just simply calculating the probability that this is less than or equal to this. And there you can see we've come to a revised probability of 1.02%. So there's just over a 1% chance that the vaccine is safe, according to this definition of safety, based on that first piece of evidence. So that piece of evidence already leads us to a posterior probability of H of just over 1%. So we're now going to use that updated information and combine it now with the second set of evidence we've got, which was the evidence of four deaths within 24 hours of the vaccination among the 15 deaths of vaccinated people. So first of all, we want to know what is the probability of getting at least four deaths within 24 hours of vaccination if the vaccine was safe? Well, let's think about it. If the vaccine was safe, then it should be just as likely that they'll die on day one as any of the other 182 days that we've observed these people. And that means that the probability of death on day one, if the vaccine was safe, is one divided by 182, which is 0 0.0055. What we're now assuming, again, is a binomial distribution, which calculates the number of deaths on day one, given that probability of death on day one, and then this is just the probability of at least four deaths on day one. So you can see how these are defined. That's just the binomial distribution with 15 events, 15 deaths. And this is just if defined to be, as long as that parent value is greater than equal to four, then it's true, otherwise it's false. So we're gonna run that evidence. And what we see is that there's a very low probability of at least four deaths on day one if the vaccination was safe. It's 0.00012%. Now we're going to use that information to again update the probability that the vaccine is safe. So remember, this was the revised probability for our hypothesis from the previous model, the 1.02. We're using this new revised probability, but we're now going to take account of that evidence here. So how we define this, if the vaccine is safe, then we know there's a very low probability of four deaths out of 15. That's the value simply come from, from there. And we're going to assume if the vaccine is not safe, then you certainly would see this evidence. So all we're going to do now is simply enter the fact that we've now observed this evidence, that there were uh, four deaths out of 15 on day one. So when we run the model, we can now see that we end up with a revised probability that the vaccine is safe of 0.0000127%, which is about one in 80 million. So it's a very low probability. And that last step, if you want to check it, is just a simple instance of Bayes' theorem, which is this formula where we know that the prior probability of H in this case was 0.0102. The probability of not H is therefore just one minus that, which is 0.9898. We know that the probability of E given H, that was the evidence the four out of the 15 deaths on the first day is that 0.0000012. And we're certain to see this uh, evidence if the vaccine is not safe. And so just plugging those values into Bayes' theorem gives the result of the posterior probability of H, which we saw calculated to be that, which is about 1 in 80 million.